Biophilia is the seventh studio album by Icelandic singer Björk. It was released on 5 October 2011, by One Little Indian Records and distributed by Nonesuch Records in North America and by Universal Music Group in the rest of the world. Björk composed it as a concept album during the 2008–2011 Icelandic financial crisis, exploring the links between nature, music and technology. Billed as the first app album, Biophilia is a multimedia project released alongside a series of apps linking the album's themes to musicology concepts. It was followed by a series of educational workshops in four continents. Four singles were issued before the album's release in 2011. Crystalline Co-produced with English dubstep duo 16-Bit, was released as the lead single on 28 June 2011, accompanied by a music video directed by longtime collaborator Michel Gondry. It was followed by the singles, Cosmogony, Virus, and Moon. Bjork promoted the album with the Biophilia Tour, which began at the Manchester International Festival in June 2011 and ended in September 2013. A bonus track on the deluxe edition of Biophilia, Natura, was released as a digital single in 2008 around the time the Biophilia project began. Natura was added as part of a series of bonus tracks after an early online leak of the album weeks before its release date. Biophilia received critical acclaim and was named one of the best albums of 2011 by several publications. It was nominated for two awards at the 55th Grammy Awards in 2013, winning Best Recording Package. It debuted in the top 40 of every chart it entered worldwide, topping the Taiwan chart and peaking in the top 5 in Iceland, France and Denmark. In 2014, Biophilia became the first app included in the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Biophilia was followed by two remix series in 2011 and 2012, collected in the remix album Bastards 2012, and music videos for the songs, Moon, Crystalline, Hollow, and Mutual Core. The recording of the album was documented in the 2013 film When Bjork Met Attenborough and the tour by the 2014 concert film Biophilia Live. Topic. Background Biophilia grew from Bjork's interest in nature and concerns about the environment. In June 2008, she performed a concert with the Icelandic band Siga Ross to raise awareness about the use of Iceland's natural resources in aluminium melting plants. She founded the Natura organization to promote Icelandic nature and grassroots industries, and released a single, Natura, on 20 October 2008. A week later, Björk wrote an article for The Times discussing the proposed sale of natural resources to ease the Icelandic financial crisis. In collaboration with Order Capital, she set up a venture capital fund to support sustainable industries in Iceland. On 30 June 2010, Björk and Dirty Projectors released a joint EP, Mount Wittenberg Orca, with proceeds going to marine protected areas. In September 2010, the renewable power company Magma Energy acquired 98.5% of shares in the Icelandic geothermal power company HS Orca. On 21 May 2010, Björk wrote an open letter to the Reykjavik grapevine calling on the Icelandic government to "...do everything in its power to revoke the contracts with Magma Energy." After the deal was approved by the Icelandic government, Björk launched a petition and promoted it with a performance at the Nordic House in Reykjavik on the 19th of July. At the end of 2010, Björk confirmed she was working on a new album. In an interview published on Fretablar she stated that the project was half complete and that she hoped to tour before the end of 2011. 
On 6 January 2011 she started a three-day public karaoke marathon to protest the Magma Energy deal. The accompanying petition was signed by 47,000 people. The petition was welcomed by Iceland Prime Minister Joanna Sigurðardóttir. The app Solar System, made by Touch Press, came out in January 2011 and featured a new instrumental track by Björk as an introduction. The demo track was confirmed to be a part of the upcoming Biophilia project. The details of the project were announced when the first Biophilia live show was announced for the Manchester International Festival in June 2011. Biophilia was stated to encompass music, apps, internet, installations and live shows. Topic: <laughs> Composition Biophilia was partly composed on an Apple iPad. Crystalline, the first single released, is a mostly electronic song, featuring a continuous, gamelest bass and electronic beats and rhythm. After the bridge, the song features a gamelest solo, and ends with an uproarious breakcore section which uses the Amen break. New musical instruments were specially developed for the album, and specially for the shows at the Manchester International Festival that took place in mid-2011 to introduce the album. The Tesla coil was used as a musical instrument on the song, Thunderbolt, a gamelest, a mixture between a gamelan and a celesta which was programmed in order to be played remotely by a tablet computer, was also used in crystalline and virus a group of pendulums were put together creating patterns with their moves transmitting the movements of the earth to the sound of a harp making the song solstice for the music bjork related the phenomenon the song describes to a musical structure or resource for example the song moon has different musical cycles that repeat throughout the song the song Thunderbolt contains arpeggios, inspired by the time between when lightning is seen and thunder is heard, and in Solstice, the counterpoint makes reference to the movement of planets and the Earth's rotation, and the pendulums used on the song make tribute to the Foucault pendulum. The lyrics also present metaphors to those phenomena. Dark matter features heavy gibberish since the dark matter phenomena are directly unexplainable virus describes fatal relationships such as the relationship between a virus and a cell as bjork explained it's like i have this new neighbor that i have to sort of learn to live with solstice presents the relation between the gravity effect on celestial bodies comparing the solar system to a christmas tree and in hollow Bjork took inspiration from her ancestors and DNA, that the grounds open below you and you can feel your mother and her mother, and her mother, and her mother, and her mother 30,000 years back. So suddenly you're this kinda tunnel, or trunk of DNA. All these ghosts come up so it ended up being a Halloween song and quite gothic in a way. It's like being part of this everlasting necklace when you're just a bead on a chain and you sort of want to belong and be a part of it and it's just like a miracle." Bjork also breaks the typical 44 times signature structure for many of the songs on Biophilia. For example, Solstice features 74 and 64 time signatures, Hollow, Crystalline, and Moon all feature a 178 time signature mutual core 54 time signature and virus 34 time signature in addition dark matter is in free time it lacks a regular pulse biophilia is also bjork's last album with frequent collaborator mark bell as he died from medical surgery complications in october 2014 Topic. Release and artwork 
When the first details about biophilia emerged, the album was expected to be released around the beginning of the residency at the Manchester International Festival in June. Eventually, the album was confirmed for a fall 2011 release. The album was originally announced for a 27 September 2011 release in the United States. Pre-order for the album started on the 19th of July 2011. Along with the standard edition album, which would be available in physical and digital formats, three additional editions were announced. The first, the deluxe edition, available in digipack format in its physical form, would contain three additional tracks. The second special edition, Build the Manual Edition, was announced to include the standard edition of Biophilia and a bonus disc, both contained in a 48-page, full-color, hardbound, cloth-covered, and thread-sewn book, tipped on lenticular panel to the front cover, with foil-blocked spine and back cover. The last edition, called the Ultimate Art Edition, included the manual edition of Biophilia in a wooden box, which was filled with ten chrome tuning forks, each one adjusted to the tone of a Biophilia track, covering a complete octave in a non-conventional scale. Differently from the standard and deluxe edition of the album, those two latter editions were available to pre-order until 12 August 2011. Moreover, the Ultimate Art Edition was limited to only 200 copies and 75 artists' proofs a. P., each one numbered and made to order. The singer was criticized for the cost of this latter edition, which was £500. Bjork unveiled the track listing for Biophilia on 19 August 2011. It was later confirmed that the second disc included in the manual edition would include a live recording of the Biophilia show in Manchester. On the 10th of May 2011, Bjork relaunched her official website using a HTML5 constellation designed by M. M. Paris. The website shifts around as the visitor moves the cursor. In June 2011, the singer started posting photos of different minerals and crystals on her Facebook official page. One of those images, which was accompanied by the comment, Introducing, was used as a placeholder cover art for the pre order of the album and mistaken for the official album cover. Eventually, Bjork unveiled the cover for the album on 17 August 2011. The cover artwork, designed by longtime collaborators M. M. Paris and shot by Inez van Lamsweerd and Vinod Matadin, features Bjork, wearing an Iris van Herpen Hort Couture brown and golden dress, taken from the designer's Synesthesia 2010 collection, along with a harp belt, made by Threes4, and a red wig, resembling a nebula, created by British hairstylist Eugene Suleiman, holding an orange crystal while being surrounded by the biophilia constellation which appears in the app. According to the singer, she was inspired by the protagonist of British-Mexican surrealist novelist Leonora Carrington's book The Hearing Trumpet to create the persona of a frustrated music teacher, which always has her head in the clouds", to explain her concepts to people around her, an attitude she thought she had while explaining her idea for biophilia to her collaborators, and that's why she decided to wear wigs throughout the whole biophilia era and promotion. On 1 September 2011, the singer announced a postponement of the album's release date, pushing it back two weeks after the former date. This was because of Bjork's dissatisfaction with the final mastering of the album. Bjork explained in a statement published on her Facebook page that she felt the album version needed more depth than the version featured on the app. The singer called longtime collaborator Layla Arab to work on the tracks, and in turn Arab recommended her mastering engineer Mandy Parnell and drum and bass artist Current Value. Parnell flew to Reykjavik to work on the record in Addy 800's mastering studio, where she spent different hours with Bjork discussing the changes to make on the album. At the end, Parnell remastered all of Biophilia songs, while Arab added beats and sonic sculpting to Crystalline, Thunderbolt, Dark Matter, and Virus. 
Current value added beats to Sacrifice, which was originally played completely acoustic during the Manchester residency. Bjork also decided to use a live recording of Solstice instead of the studio version. Three weeks before the supposed release, the album was leaked on the internet. Bjork called the leak frustrating but predictable. NPR officially offered a streaming of the album on 5 October 2011, the same day in which it was first officially released in Japan. Biophilia was worldwide released in the following days, most notably on 10 October in the United Kingdom and on of October in the United States. App The Biophilia app consists of a series of ten separate apps, one for each song, all included in a «mother app», which contains a menu made up by a three-dimensional constellation which the user can shift, zoom and orbit by swiping their fingers to open the apps. The first time the app is opened, an introduction by David Attenborough describes the application and the project itself. This introduction was also used to open the Biophilia Tour residency concerts. On the up left corner, the ''Musical Compass'' icon serves as a home button to return to the menu. If the icon is touched when the user is already facing the menu, a list of the application, including two pages for ''How to Navigate'' and ''Credits'' would appear. Every app is named after the corresponding song and includes different options, along with a description of the song and application. This short description linked to an essay written for each song by Nikki Debon. The first option in the apps is to play the app, the second is the score, in which the user can look at the composition of the song, use it as a karaoke machine as the score has no vocals in it, or turn off the music and use it as sheet music. The animation option links to an animation of the song created by Stephen Malinowski, in which different forms of different colors, linked to a specific instrument in the song, including Bjork's voice, zoom in or out depending on their intensity. The fourth option shows the lyrics of the song, which are not available in the Dark Matter app as it is sung in gibberish and thus has no lyrics at all. The last option is to scroll the credits, which name the people who have worked in the app. The Mother app Cosmogony, is the constellation that includes all the other applications, and thus contains no particular game or instrument to play. Nevertheless, it contains two other options, which are the possibility to replay the intro narrated by Attenborough and to play the song in its entirety. When the user plays the song, whether they would click on the compass icon they would return to the main menu immediately. Tapping in an empty space of the constellation would also make the user return to the main screen. The apps are roughly divided into two kinds, the ones in which the user play a sort of games, and the other ones that work like a musical instrument. Almost every song on the app is presented in early, work-in-progress versions. For example, tracks like Thunderbolt, Sacrifice, and Hollow are missing their percussion parts and beats as they were added to the songs shortly before the album's physical release when Bjork decided these early versions were unsatisfactory for a traditional music album. While Sacrifice is missing beats and is performed at a slightly lower speed. The most interesting early version of a biophilia track is Solstice. The album version was recorded live during her Manchester residency, but the app originally contained a demo version performed in studio. In addition to these work in progress versions, several of the games feature the songs with sections of music missing, to be played and manipulated by the player. Thunderbolt, for example has the player drag their fingers across the screen to play the Tesla coil baseline. <laughs> Gameplay The application called Moon 
works as a music sequencer, using a string of little pearls linked to a central spine topped by a moon. The user can decide whether to play the original version of the song or to modify it by rotating the pearls to adjust the notes. Rotating the moon would instead modify the number of notes that are played in the sequence. The user can then decide to save the composition, to load one already saved beforehand, to reset the song or to play the original version. Similarly to the Moon app, the Solstice application works as an instrument, in which the user can pull strings out of a central sun, create orbits around the sun and rotating planets by touching the screen and using the planets to pluck the strings like it was a harp. The user can also change the direction and speed of the planets and create multiple layers of orbits. The instrument can also be played in tree mode, where the system would stretch to become a tree. The sacrifice app features a keyboard that allows the user to type letters linked to different snippets of the song. Both these two latter applications allow players to save or load their composition. In the Thunderbolt app, the user can create electric sparks by tapping their fingers on a black screen, or create an arpeggio, depicted by an electrical line, by using two or more fingers at the same time, to compose arpeggios while Bjork sings the song or independently. The player can also adjust the fade time and the drawing length of the lightnings. The other apps work like more conventional video games. In the app for Virus, the user shall protect a cell from the attack of various bacteria that try to infect it, as the song plays in the background. But if the player prevents the infection, the song plays in a loops, so the user must lose the game in order to make the song continue. The instrument mode in the virus app let the player use the cell nucleus and the bacteria as percussion by tapping and jolting them. In dark matter, the actual song plays in part until it stops and the user must mimic the pattern of lighting of some orbs to continue in the song, while in the instrument mode the orbs let the user play different scales. The Mutual Core app features a video game in which the player arranges geological layers in the same way as an accordion to play chords. During the verses, the player tries to unite the hemispheres, because the energy keeps them apart while during the chorus the app shifts to a cutaway of a planet, and the player can touch the layers of the planet's interior to open it up and touch the core. The player may also change the resistance of the chords to increase the difficulty. Crystalline features a video game in which the player, in the form of a crystal, travels through different tunnels, depending on where the player tilts their device, with each tunnel corresponding to a part of the song. The player may decide to repeat the same part of the song endless times if he goes through the same tunnel. As the crystal travels through the pipes, the player can catch other crystals scattered around, resulting in the opening of new tunnels and paths, and in the end the resulting crystalline formation can be saved as a picture. The hollow presents a video depiction of the body interior, starting from the blood tissue descending into showing the DNA and the replicum. The hollow Instrument let the user tap different enzymes depicted in the background to play time signatures and build a drum machine. Topic: <laughs> Release and availability. It was firstly released on the 19th of July 2011 when the Cosmogony and Crystalline apps were released. On the same day, Bjork teased the release of the app by posting a video in which the introduction by Attenborough can be heard. The other app were added later, with Virus being added on 9 August, Moon on 6 September and the rest of the apps were released alongside the album on 10 October 2011. The application was originally made available only on Apple iOS devices. 
Bjork refused to undertake a partnerships with Apple so the company only accorded her the availability of a page on the iTunes store that would show the app and the singles extracted from the album all on the same page and Apple did not fund the project. Scott Snibb commented that he was not sure if the project would be ported into some other platforms. Bjork stated she hoped pirates would crack biophilia into other platforms. The app was effectively cracked into a virus by cyber criminals from Eastern Europe, that tried to spread a malware into Android devices that would download the fake application. A holiday edition of the Solstice app, with different sound samples and colors, was released on 21 December 2011. The same special edition was offered for free during Christmas 2012. On 17 January 2012, Bjork updated on her YouTube channel a series of videos in which she and Snib explain the contents of the different apps and offer a tutorial on how they work. Bjork expressed her will to transport biophilia on other devices by using a crowdfunding initiative. On 28 January 2013, Bjork started a crowdfunding on Kickstarter to port the biophilia app on Android and Windows 8 platforms. The singer also released a video in which she explained the reason behind the funding and thanked for the help. The crowdfunding was cancelled on 7 February 2013, after only £15,370 were collected out of the £375,000 goal. While this was early interpreted as a sign of failure of the initiative, the singer later explained that the team had found a cheaper and faster way to transport the apps on Android thanks to a company named Aportable. The apps were ultimately released on Android devices on 17 July 2013. Promotion Topic appearances and interviews Bjork promoted biophilia extensively by giving different interviews on music criticism websites. Most notably, she explained the concept behind the project during interviews with Stereogum, Drowned in Sound, Pitchfork and Rolling Stone. She was featured on the cover of the 200th issue of Dazed and Confused, for which she also served as a guest editor. The volume featured behind-the-scenes and interviews with Bjork's collaborators in the project, including the choir Gradual Nobili, 16-bit, Scott Snibb and Stephen Malinowski. The singer was also featured on the cover of the Billboard magazine. Bjork also gave various radio interviews with BBC Radio 1, BBC Radio 6 Music, XFM, The Strand, CBC Radio and Studio 360. She restrained from giving televised interviews but she filmed an interview for Associated Press which was published on YouTube. On the 22nd of November 2011, she appeared on BBC Two's show Later, with Jules Holland to perform Crystalline, Cosmogony and Thunderbolt. These two latter performances were broadcast on 25 November. The three performances were later included in the reissue of Bjork 2003 DVD later with Jules Holland, that was released on 18 June 2012. On 31 January 2012, the singer performed Cosmogony on Comedy Central's late-night satirical program The Colbert Report, where she also answered some questions from the show's presenter Stephen Colbert. On the 22nd of May 2012, Bjork made an appearance at the New York Public Library, alongside Scott Snibb and Curva, to announce the Biophilia Educational Workshops at the library and at the Children's Museum of Manhattan, and to answer some questions. On 16 May 2013, it was announced that Bjork would serve as one of the speakers at the Wired 2013 conference, where the singer was interviewed by Jefferson Hack on 18 October 2013. The singer also attended the premiere of Biophilia Live at the 2014 Tribeca Film Festival on 26 April 2014, where she took part in a Q&A alongside the film directors Peter Strickland and Nick Fenton. 
Topic singles and videos Crystalline was released as the lead single from the album. The single release was preceded by two video teasers. The first, entitled Road to Crystalline, featured Björk driving on her van through a road in Iceland while playing an excerpt of an N early version of the song, and was released on 27 May 2011. The second one, released on 13 June 2011, showed the Gamalest, the Celesta Gamalan hybrid created for the Biophilia project. The single version of the song, namely the Serban Ghania mix, leaked onto the internet on 25 June 2011. The single was officially released on 28 June 2011. The music video, directed by French director Michel Gondry, was released on YouTube on 26 July 2011. After Crystalline, three songs on were released in iTunes as singles beside the expansion app. The second single app released was Cosmogony on 19 July. On the same day, the Mother app and the application for Crystalline were released. The next singles were Virus, released on 9 August, and finally Moon, on 6 September, after being leaked on of August. Both accompanying apps were released on the same day. A music video for Moon, directed by Björk alongside M. M. Paris, Inez and Vanud and James Merry, recorded during the photo sessions for Biophilia, was released on 23 September, even though it wasn't released as a single. A live performance of Thunderbolt from the Manchester International Festival was released as a music video on Spotify on 2 November 2011. On 6 March 2012, a promotional music video was released for Hollow, directed by biomedical animator Drew Berry. The video, previously used in the Hollow app, features a three-dimensional exploration of Bjork's molecules and also a molecular complex based on Bjork's headscan, influenced by the works of Italian painter Giuseppe Archimboldo. A music video for Mutual Core was commissioned by the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles and was directed by Andrew Thomas Huang. The video was released on 13 November 2012 on the museum's YouTube channel. <laughs> Remix series Leading up to the album release, Bjork issued a series of remixes of Crystalline and Cosmogony, titled The Crystalline Series. The remixes were released on digital download, LP, and in a limited CD edition. The first part, which contained the two single versions of the songs by Serban Ghania, was released on 19 July 2011, coinciding with the digital release of Cosmogony. The second part included two remixes of Crystalline and Thunderbolt by Syrian musician Omar Suleiman, alongside an original song by the musician, called Mawal, was released on 26 July. This release was anticipated by a video teaser, which showed Suleiman during the recording sessions for the remix of Crystalline. The third and fourth parts, containing remixes of the two tracks by British electronic musician and producer Matthew Herbert, were released on the 2nd of August 2011. On the 6th of March 2012, One Little Indian announced the upcoming release of another eight-part series of remixes. Built as the Biophilia Remix series, each part was announced to come out starting on the 16th of April 2012, each every two weeks after the other, on digital download, CD, and LP. The deluxe edition of each release consisted in a limited edition package with micro textured blue minerals papers and embossed foil lettering, designed by M. M. Paris. The first entry featured remixes of Crystalline and Solstice by current value. The second part, released on 30 April 2012, included remixes of Thunderbolt and Sacrifice by experimental hip hop band Death Grips. On the third part of the series, Hudson Mohawk remixed Virus and El Gincho reworked Cosmogony 
This entry came out on 14 May 2012. The fourth part once again featured remixes by Current Value, who this time remixed Thunderbolt and Hollow and was released on 28 May 2012. The fifth entry was released on of June 2012, including a King Cannibal remix of Thunderbolt and a remodel of Dark Matter, produced by Alva Noto. Matthew Herbert remixed Virus, Mutual Core, and Sacrifice, and his remixes were included in the sixth entry, released on 25 June 2012, while the seventh part consisted of two remixes of Mutual Core and Hollow by 16 bit. The eighth and last part of the series was delayed for unspecified reasons. It was ultimately released on 13 November 2012, and included a remix of Moon by The Slips, and a remix of Mutual Core by these new Puritans. On 8 October 2012, Bjork announced Bastards, a collection of remixes of Biophilia tracks which were previously included in the two series. Every remix was remastered by Mandy Parnell. The compilation was released on the 19th of November 2012. Topic: Critical reception. Biophilia received positive reviews from music critics. At Metacritic, which assigns a normalized rating out of 100 to reviews from mainstream critics, the album received an average score of 79, based on 37 reviews, which indicates, "...generally favorable reviews." Critical acclaim came from BBC Music's Mike Diver, who described the album as, "...mesmerizing," and an amazing, inventive and wholly unique eighth album from an artist without peer." Praising both her voice as a "...controlled presence," and her composition work. Bjork has crafted sounds which are entirely hers alone." Muhammad Chowdhury of Consequence of Sound praised the "...asteroid bass volley," of "...mutual core," and "...apocalyptical breakbeat coda," of crystalline", and stated that, "...they blend archaic instrumentation with blistering electronica", and even if he labeled biophilia as, "...hardly easy listening", he found that, "...it'll stand as one of the more rewarding albums of her storied career". Biophilia was named, "...CD of the Week", by the Daily Telegraph, whose writer Helen Brown described the album as, willfully weird, yet, "...surprisingly accessible, hypnotic and beautiful if you give it time and concentration, the audio equivalent of looking through a microscope at crystals growing." According to NME's Luke Turner, "...looking past the techno-wizardry, the grand designs and the brainy philosophy." Biophilia is "...intimate, playful and beautiful." and a wonderful distillation of ideas, playful and serious, intimate yet the most fantastic journey. A record so particular to Bjork's own artistry that no one could ever hope to replicate it." Now Magazine's Kevin Ritchie praised the album as, "...one of Bjork's best and most challenging records," and that, "...its accompanying iPad suite." isn't required to enjoy the album, which has a satisfyingly messy and unhinged quality, much like the natural wonders that inspired it." Similarly, Gareth James of Clash felt that the album, "...sounds beautifully warm and compellingly human," and stated that, "...while much of the fuss around the album has centered on its innovative and hugely interactive app release, this music really doesn't need any window dressing because it's as good a collection of songs as she has put her name to in ten years." Kyle Anderson of Entertainment Weekly stated that Biophilia is, "...an ingenious marriage of fairy and machine. 
but the singer's greatest strength remains the glistening natural resource flowing from her throat. For Heather Fairs of All Music, Biophilia is easily her most ambitious project as a whole, whose boldest innovations are in its presentation rather than in the actual music, and sometimes feels like a soundtrack, but further adds that just because the music is only one part of the biophilia experience doesn't mean it's unsatisfying." Fares eventually gave the album four out of five stars, also citing its "...blend of education and emotion." Daniel Patton of Musico viewed biophilia as a "...synthesis of Bjork's work thus far." Yet. It sees her continue to pursue her own radical and individual path with unshakable conviction." He also complimented her language. English always sounds so enticing and odd when delivered in her syntax." Rolling Stone's David Fricke compared the album to Nico's work with its organ, squishy electronics and the high size of a women's choir in stark fields of echo, Biophilia is like a haunted digital sister of Nico's 1969 album, The Marble Index." Alexis Petridis of The Guardian wrote that, "...Biophilia never feels like hard work, however much the accompanying BUMF tries to convince you it is." Despite his skepticism over interactive music and apps, he stated the quality of the music is far less questionable. Pop Matters music editor Arnold Pan complimented Bjork as being innovative by nature and eager to take risks, and praised Biophilia's songs, despite claiming, There are some moments on Biophilia that are too atmospheric and subtle especially the low profile dark matter and the overly abstract hollow with its cold modern classical stylings a more mixed review came from pitchfork's mark pitlick which felt that the singer prioritized the superficial aspects of biophilia's presentation over well the music further adding that she combats the lack of any real structure or melody by over-singing, or lapsing into one of her familiar and increasingly lazy-sounding house vocal runs." He also wrote that, "...as an innovator, she's as vibrant as ever, but as a songwriter, she sounds tired." Andy Gill of The Independent gave the album a negative review, dubbing it as, "...hard to love," and added that, at times, it's hard not to conclude that the music and lyrics were devised totally separately, and then forced together in forms it's difficult to acknowledge as songs." 2011 year-end list entries Topic Accolades Bjork and Biophilia received numerous nominations after the announcement of the project. The singer was nominated at the 2011 Q Awards for Greatest Act of the Last 25 Years, losing to U2. At the 2011 O Music Awards she was awarded the Digital Genius Honor, while at the AIM Independent Music Awards she was honored for her outstanding contribution to music. The singer also received a Lifetime Achievement at the 2011 Lovey Awards. At the 2011 Antville Music Awards, the Crystalline music video was nominated for Best Art Direction. Apple picked the Biophilia app as one of the top five music apps of 2011. M. M. Paris were awarded a Tokyo Type Directors Club Award for their work on Biophilia artwork, manual and app. Biophilia was one of the 12 albums nominated for the 2011 Nordic Music Prize. At the 2012 Brit Awards, Bjork received a nomination for International Female Solo Artist. Bjork received five nominations at the 2011 Icelandic Music Awards, being nominated for Pop, Rock, Jazz or Blues Performer of the Year and Pop, Rock, Jazz or Blues Female Singer of the Year, winning the former. Biophilia was nominated for Pop, Rock Album of the Year and Crystalline received a nomination in the Pop, Rock Song of the Year. 
The Biophilia Tour Live at Harper won the Musical Event of the Year Award. At the 2012 NME Awards Biophilia received a nomination in the Best Album Artwork category. Bjork appeared at the 2012 Webby Awards to receive the Webby Artist of the Year from the hands of Scott Snibb, where she stated A -E -I -O -U in fashion of the five words limited speeches of the ceremony. Crystalline was nominated for Best Female Video at the 2012 MTV Video Music Awards Japan. The Biophilia Tour show at the Kumba Tajin Festival was nominated for the Alternative Performance Award at the 2012 Lunas del Auditorio. Bjork received another two nominations at the 2012 Antville Music Awards, where the Mutual Core video was nominated for Best Art Direction and Best Visual Effects, winning the latter. At the 2013 Music Producers Guild Awards, Bjork received the MPG Innovation Award, which Emma Burkett accepted on her behalf. Biophilia received two nominations at the 2013 Grammy Awards, for Best Alternative Album and Best Recording Package, winning the latter. The award went to the art directors, M. M. Paris, and not to Bjork herself. The Mutual Core video was nominated in the Music Video of the Year category at the 2012 Icelandic Music Awards and was nominated at the 2013 Webby Awards in the Online Music and Video, Music category. The video won the People's Voice Webby in that category, as voted by the people on the Internet, but lose the Webby bestowed by the International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences to Fjorga Piano by the Siga Ross. The video received two nominations at the 2013 UK Music Video Awards for Best Visual Effects in a Video and Best Art Direction in a Video, winning none. However, Andrew Thomas Huang was nominated for his work in the video as Best New Director and went on to win the award. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Commercial Performance. Biophilia debuted at number 27 on the U.S. Billboard 200 on the issue dated 29 October 2011 with first week sales of 15,000 copies. The album also opened at number 1 on the Dance, Electronic Albums, number 2 on the Tastemaker Albums, number 5 on the Alternative Albums, number 8 on the Rock Albums and number 19 on the Digital Albums. It debuted at number 21 on the UK Albums Chart, becoming Bjork's first album not to break the top 10. In Japan, the album debuted at number 18 with first week sales of 6,525 copies. The following week it plunged down to number 23, selling additional 4,412 units. In Taiwan, Biophilia debuted at number 9 on the G Music Western Albums chart for the week of 14 October 2011, sharing the rank with Joe Jonas's album Fastlife, with 1.03% sales volume. The album managed to outrank her previous album, Volta, which debuted at number 14 on the same chart over four years before. The limited edition of the album debuted at number 16 on the Gaon International Albums chart in South Korea, while the standard edition debuted at number 22. After a year of its release, the album reached number one on the G Music Western Albums chart in Taiwan, coinciding Bjork's concert on the territory. Legacy. On the 11th of June 2014, the Museum of Modern Art located in New York announced that the Biophilia app became the first downloadable app in the museum permanent collection. The app inclusion was requested by senior curator Paola Antonelli, that commented, Bjork has never ceased to experiment and surprise. The multidimensional nature of her art in which sound and music are the spine, but never the confines, for multimedia performances that also encompass graphic and digital design, art, cinema, science, illustration, philosophy, fashion, and more.
is a testament to her curiosity and desire to learn and team up with diverse experts and creators. It was just a matter of time before she would invade and conquer the territory of design. With Biophilia however, Bjork truly innovated the way people experience music by letting them participate in performing and making the music and visuals, rather than just listening passively. Topic. Track listing All lyrics written by Bjork, except where noted, all music composed by Bjork, except where noted, all songs produced by Bjork, except where noted. Topic. Personnel Credits adapted from Biophilia album liner notes and Bjork.com. Musicians Technical personnel Artwork Additional personnel Topic Charts Topic Release history Topic Bibliography equals equals notes <laughs>